Now, the next tool that we will look at is the planer. Uh, now, this will plane up to 20 inches wide and about eight inches uh, deep. So it's a very versatile machine. It has uh, a very large cutter head up in here with uh, many, many knife blades that actually shave off the top of the wood as it goes through. There are pressure rollers on the inside that keep the piece down against the table and there are other rollers that advance the wood through the planer. Um, the two uh, bars on the top uh, give you a place to put the piece of wood to run it back through here to run it through for the next pass. On longer pieces of wood, it generally takes two people to operate it, one in front and one behind to catch the wood. Now, as all of the machines in the shop, they have a uh, a disconnect switch. You can see it in the corner over there. Um, when you want, we're ready to operate the machine, you would turn that on, and now the machine is energized. Uh, you set your depth of cut with this wheel here, which will change the height of the cutter head. So you adjust that to the thickness of the wood that you want to cut. You can use the gauge on the side of the machine here uh, with an indicator that will show the depth of cut. Once you're set up and you're ready to actually take a piece of wood and run through, uh, then you would reach over and hit the green button and that will turn the machine on. Then you would simply start feeding the piece through here. The uh, advancing rollers would catch it and pull it all the way through. Um, and then you would bring it back around and you would lower the, the cutter head um, an appropriate amount. And then you would make another pass until you get it to the thickness that you want. Now, you would never just stay on one position. So you would feed this through the first time here. The second time you would move over, move over again, and move over again. So you use the entire width of the cutter head. This will allow them to wear evenly from one end to the other and of course last longer. If you run everything through the center in uh, short order, you would have the blades in the center dull while the ones on the outside were still sharp. But that wouldn't help you much if you're using a wider board because that center section would not cut as cleanly as the outside. So you would stagger this in a random pattern so you can utilize the entire width of the cutter head. Um, if you happen to get a kickback on this machine, it will take this board and throw it back. So it isn't wise to stand in front of it when you're feeding it through. So you would always be standing to the side. So if it does kick back, it can't hit you. Now, there are also anti-kickback uh, mechanisms in the front of this that are designed that if there's any pressure back out of the machine, they would engage and prevent a kickback. Um, but that may or may not work. Um, on the soft woods, it's easy to pull right through um, the mechanism. So never stand in front of the work. Always stand to the side. And that's actually all that students would be allowed um, to operate. All of the other adjustments on the machine are instructor only. And now we've covered a lot of machines uh, in this video. And there was just one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, on all of the machines, you've seen these pipes extending up from them. Now these all go up to a dust collection system that services the entire shop and all the major machines. The actual dust collector itself is outside the building. Um, now to 
operate any of these machines that have dust collectors attached to them. Before you operate them, you go turn on the dust collector. Now you do that at the switch at the back of the building. And then once your dust collector is on, then you operate the machine. The reason I haven't turned these machines on or turned on the dust collector is they're all very loud. And it would be very difficult for me to, to talk above it so you'd be able to hear what I'm trying to say on the video. So we have done it without the machines running and without the dust collector on. But that's just an important thing you need to understand before you operate one of these large stationary machines, you turn on the dust collector. Now that will conclude um, all of the major machines that we'll talk about this week. Uh, you just combine what you've seen on the video with the written material in the modules and you'll have all the information that you need uh, to do well on the rest of the course. When it comes to the quizzes, you will notice that uh, the quizzes can come either from the material prevented on, presented on the videos or on the written material. So you need to be familiar with both. There are some things that I will talk about in the videos that aren't covered in the written material and vice versa. So to be well prepared for the test, you need to pay attention to both the videos and the written material. Good luck and we will see you next time at the next set of videos.